find a solution to their problem that you can help them with. Now, obviously, the problem here is they want to get rid of the house or it may not even be the house, but they may be sick and tired of it. But you need to find a solution to help them out. To do better in their business, but I also have to... Finding out their reason why. Everyone has a reason why they want to sell. Now, some people come to you and say, yeah, that's my reason why is uh, price. If I get the right price, then, then yeah, I'm going to sell. That's not their true reason why. Okay. If their reason why is price, why well, don't say, I, you know what? I'm probably not going to be your buyer. But we can still go through everything else. But if the reason you're going to sell is just price alone and nothing else, it doesn't look like I'm I'm going to be able to help you out. Because I got to be able to make money. I do this for a living. So if they do not, uh, then... They're not motivated to move on. What you do, what would you do in, in the first place? You would follow up with them. Would you just leave that leave that lead and never talk to them again? No. You put them in a sheet of paper, your CRM. So a CRM is a customer relations management system. Okay. You put them in your CRM as Follow up with this person every month, every two months, every three months, whatever makes sense. And you'll know what makes sense based on your conversation with them. Okay. If they say, oh, you know what? We're cleaning out the property. We're, we'll be ready in two weeks. Follow up with them next week. Oh, we'll be ready in two months. Follow up, follow up with them in a month and a half or a month. Whatever they say to follow up with them, scale it back just a little bit so that you can um, still be on their mind when that comes, as well as you may be the first person to get to them. Because if you're calling them, rest assured, other people are too. The last thing is that it, with this is find a solution to their problem that you can help them with. Now, obviously, the problem here is they want to get rid of the house or it may not even be the house, but they may be sick and tired of it. But you need to find a solution to help them out. And I'll keep saying that we are deal finders. We are not deal creators. Okay. So finding the solution, say they, they don't have any equity in the property whatsoever, but they need to move on. They need to do, they need to leave. They need to, whatever the case may be, give them their options. Say, if you put this on the market, you're going to have to come out of pocket for money. Okay, but what if we can take over your mortgage? What's your mortgage rate at? What is, uh, you know, it's called a subject to. Okay, what can what can we do with that? You explain the benefits and we'll go over that later on, but we'll, we'll you explain the benefits between going with that versus, um, you know, Versus, hey, you might, if you sell this on market, you're going to have to come out of pocket probably about a good 20, 30 grand, whatever the math comes out to. Okay. 
versus if I take over your mortgage, I might be able to get you some money. And if you're doing a subject two, you let them know, hey, I work with a bunch of other investors. And for this one, you know, I would be passing along to them, but I would get you both fully in touch so that you're fully comfortable with each other. I would never want to transfer that over without that. Okay. And I might be able to get you like maybe five grand or something, you know, depending, obviously it depends on the numbers and things like that. All right. So what do you do with the lead once you get it? All right. Setting up the appointment or a call or a, a time to call back with an offer. Okay. When you set up an appointment with the seller, the not only do you you set up the appointment, but then you have to follow up with that appointment. So, like for instance, if I say, okay, um Wednesday, I will uh let's meet at five o'clock on Wednesday. Okay. When I'm uh, on Tuesday, I'm going to give them a call and just say, hey, just want to follow up, make sure we're still good for Wednesday. That way I'm, I'm fresh in their mind and they're not forgetful. Okay. Matt, do you have a question? No. Okay. Okay. I have a quick question. I put sure. it in the chat. I don't know if you've seen it, but is there uh, any like seller issue that you should actually avoid or just anything that you should probably just kind of be weary of when speaking to sellers? Um, what do you mean? Um, like for example, I know we should mostly be just looking for solutions, but if <clears throat> anyone's willing to sell, should we just take it or is there besides price and maybe just them kind of wanted too much for it that you don't really get to make it a deal but is there any other circumstances where you wouldn't want to take on that so like for instance going through probate going through any type of other situations that you don't know how to handle i always would say i i i would never sit there and say i'm not going to take this on what I would do is I would reach into my network and and try to partner up with somebody who's done that before. OK. And still try to help out the seller. Where things don't work and where you may want to walk away is if the numbers just don't work and you can't sell it to an investor. OK. Unfortunately, there are times where that happens. OK, investors only care about the numbers. Rightfully so. They only care about the money. They want to make money. There's different ways to make money in this in real estate. Buy and hold, fix and flip. OK, if you know a property is pretty much only good for buy and hold opportunity, then that's where you need to stay is buy and hold investors. And you advertise it, you put it in your, your advertising as such. You know, um, if you're virtual, everyone has their own process on how to get photos. But setting it, when you get the appointment, that's when you need to get the photos, get video, overtake photos or do video. Okay. Do everything that you can in order to understand because that might be the only time that you're in that property. So what I like to do is I like to make sure that no matter what happens, I'm in that, um, you know, like I'm getting as much as I can in that property. Okay. I'm documenting everything so that I can take everything that I've 
taken, the photos, the video, I can take it to a contractor and say, give me a rough estimate on what you would, you would charge to get the property to the state of, say, this comp. Randy, you might talk about this in a later week yep. here, but is, do you have a checklist for us going through the properties to you know, make sure that we took a photo of everything that's noteworthy to investors? So uh, we will cover that. We'll actually, uh, later on in the week, um, we're actually going to all get together at some point. And I want to go through a mock appointment. Okay. And take photos and do all of that. So that will be coming. Okay. But uh, I don't have a checklist at the moment, but think of it like this. You're walking through a property. I'm taking pictures as I'm walking through the property. Okay. As well as if I see something that investors going to be concerned about, I don't try to hide it. I focus on it. Okay. If I know what a, um, a contractor is going to come back and say, Hey, I need to know whether this is load bearing to be able to take it out. Well, guess where I'm going to do? I'm going to concentrate in the basement and I'm going to make sure it, they have pictures of the beams and which way they go and so on and so forth. Okay. So um, same thing with the air ducts and, and the flooring and, and whether they can refinish it or they'll just go over top of it, you know, things like that. Now you don't know all of that. That's perfectly fine. But that's why we'll we'll go through this and, and we'll practice all that. OK, um, that's actually one of the reasons why I chose you guys, because you guys are all are all local. So. All right. Um, so also establish a renovation cost. OK, establishing a renovation cost based on the photos and what you think that it's going to cost to renovate the property. There are a few different things and a few different ways you can do the renovation. I go based on experience because of I've been doing this for a while, but one thing you, you can do is ask your buyers. And then based on that properties moving forward, you can kind of get the same idea. Okay. Um, I do have a, uh, a deal calculator that I will be giving to you guys. Okay. Um, and on there in the, in the, um, section for, uh, the rehab estimator, there's a, if it's light, medium, or heavy, you can type in the price per square foot. Right now I have it for, I think, uh, 25 for light, 35 for, uh, for medium and 45 for heavy. You type in the square foot of a house and then it will automatically calculate whether you choose light, medium or, or heavy. Okay. So it's a, it's a starting point. It's a rough idea. Um, but what constitutes is light, what constitutes a medium, what constitutes a heavy everyone's going to be based on their own thing. Cosmetic rehab is light. Okay. Medium rehab is where you're replacing every single cosmetic in the dang house. Okay. We are not moving walls or anything like that. Okay. But you got to repaint the whole house. You're replacing everything in the house. Okay. And then heavy rehab is where you're going to have to reconfigure some stuff maybe some foundation issues, things like that. The roof needs to be done. The more, the, the more expensive stuff that needs to get done, the higher on that priority is, whether it's heavy, medium, or, or light, all right? Um,
was once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room And damn, what a hell of a view